Welcome to Modeling and Environment in 3D Max. This is an intermediate level tutorial. This first section will cover setting up our scene. Now the most important thing when modeling is to save as much time as possible, even if it's milliseconds. The best way to do this is through Customize, Customize User Interface. If you're performing an action more than once, you want to assign a hotkey to it, and you do it in this dialog right here. Now, if you're using a public computer, you want to save your UI at the end of every session, and then reset. The next import most important thing is the unit setup. This is the standard selection for 3D Max, but I like to work in US standard feet with decimal inches. It helps me keep objects in relation to each other using real world space values. The next important thing I'd like to discuss is the marquee selection. We select this using Customize Preferences. Under the General tab, you want to make sure that Auto Window Crossing by Direction is turned on. What this does is when we're modeling, if we have multiple uh, objects in the scene, if you drag from left to right, only the objects within your marquee selection will be selected. If you drag from right to left, all of them will be selected. This saves a considerable amount of time going up and selecting this, going up and turning it off. The last thing is set project folder. One quick way to navigate somewhere is if you have your explorer set up to where you want to go, just copy the URL and put it in here. Now every time we save our scene, it's going to go right to that directory. When making art, it's important to get as much reference material as possible. We're going to be working on this football stadium. Now I already walked around and got as much video reference as possible. It's better to get video than still images because it gives you 30 frames per second to look at as opposed to just an image every once in a while. And the more reference you have, the better. To complement this, you also want to use Google Maps as much as possible. Not only does this overhead satellite view give you a perfect blueprint of the area which you can um, base your sizing off of, but you can also drag this guy onto the streets to get a street side view which helps give you a good idea of the surroundings. It's not that useful in this situation, but when you're making models um, of buildings near streets, it's incredibly useful. I like to work in two viewports. You go to Configure, Layout, and then hit this. The next thing we're going to do is lay out our blueprints. So you want to go to your overhead map, hit Print Screen, go into Photoshop, and open up a new document, control N, hit control V. As you've seen, I already edited the picture, so it's um, cropped and rotated. In order to get this line, you just hit control R for our ruler and drag over in here, and now you can see that this lines up pretty nicely in the vertical axis. So the next thing you want to grab in Photoshop is go to image, image size, and write down those numbers. I've written it down as 351 and 524. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your whole scene is in real world space. So I looked up on the internet and found out that a football field is 4,320 inches by 1,918.8 inches. Now I'm going to take that image of the football stadium and put it under that. Hit M for our material editor. I have it loaded in the material slot, which is hit that, hit that, and it'll prompt you to open that up. I want to move it down in world space a little bit, so I right click on this and bring it down a little bit. But this grid is annoying, so I hit G to turn it off. Now this is the first time I really wanted some hotkeys, so let's go ahead and set them up. Customize user interface. Now I want restrict to Z. I want this to be Z, so I'm going to assign. Restrict to Y should be C, and restrict to X, 
Restrict to X should be X. I want um, wireframe smooth highlights toggle, so start typing that in. I want that to be control Q. Oh, we, we should remove everything first, then control Q. Um, I want shade selected toggle. That should be control Q. And shift Q should be shade selected faces toggle. So let's remove this and shift Q. Um, the other things I want would be snaps toggle. Let's give this control B and shift S for use axis constraints. Uh, that would be under snap. So sometimes you have to look for it a bit. Snap use access constraint toggle. Shift S. You should be assigning whatever makes sense to you. I'm fairly particular about my snaps and I got to that by right clicking on this. So I want to take off grid points and set it to vertex and midpoint. The reason we previously made this rectangle the size of a football stadium is so that we can get our, um, our model to be the proper size. So what I want to do is take this image of a football stadium and make sure these lines just line up with that. So I want to go to this hierarchy, effect pivot only, turn on control B for snaps, and just snap to this vertex here. Now when I size it down, I can get a lot more specific with it. I'm going to right click on this uh, scale here and scale this in and then scale this. So now we know that this is the proper size for what it should be and we can base the rest of everything off of that. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a plane which will be the reference image for the entire stadium. So it's the exact same thing as the field. We go into here, map quest overhead, apply it to our plane. Now the reason I previously got the dimensions of this JPEG image uh, when we were in Photoshop is so that I could make sure that my plane is uh, relationally correct to itself. So we want it to be 351 by 524. Let's see, that looks a lot better. I'm going to bring it down a little bit so that we can see our rectangle, which I left in existence for this purpose. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before, where I'm going to line up one of these corners, and notice I can switch between which axis I'm moving it in by hitting my ZXY uh, hotkey constraints I made earlier. Constrain our pivot with snap. Um, can and then just scale it up here. Now you notice how when I hit move and scale it will update this for me. So I once it's open, whether it's in scale or anything, I really don't need to bother with it anymore. I'm just going to drag this down to here and that will allow me to scale it all in relation to itself. There we go. Now that we've got our reference plane set up, we want to delete our rectangle and go ahead and name our things. So one hotkey I forgot to put in that I really like is selection, uh, selection floater. Right here. So I'm going to assign Q to that, hit Q, which will pull up this interface, and as you can see we've got plane 1 and 2. Plane 1 is going to be our football field, 
plane 2 is going to be our map quest reference. As you can see, I like to keep my namespace all in lowercase and with an underscore in between them. That's going to help later on if you ever get into the gaming industry for the programmers because that'll limit the amount of names they can put in. If there's the option of having an uppercase M or a lowercase M and they're trying to write a script, it's going to become very frustrating for them. So this is just a good habit to get into.